For people who don't know this film, tell us what is it about? The, the, the Body Remembers When the World Broke Open is a film about two Indigenous women uh, from vastly different lived experience who meet on the streets of East Vancouver um, after one of them escapes a violent partner. Uh, well, the title, The Body Remembers When the World Broke Open, uh, is borrowed from an essay by Billy Ray Belcourt, who is uh, a prominent uh, poet and scholar in Canada. He's a, a queer Cree um, young person and uh, is, is just a, a very thoughtful individual. So he, he, um, he, he bestowed the honor <laughs> of letting us uh, borrow, borrow the title. Aside from the financing, what came first when it came to you know, deciding that, okay, we're going to make this into a film? Uh, well, the film uh, is inspired by an experience that I had uh, in, in the same neighborhood where the film takes place. Um, and I, I encountered a young indigenous woman who uh, was fleeing violence at home, uh, and she was pregnant and literally standing barefoot in the rain in the winter in Vancouver. And... Um, I was profoundly impacted by that experience. Uh, I never saw her again, and I, I wanted to honor her story and her experience, and as well as our experience and everything I learned from those few hours that I spent with her. Um, so uh, I wanted to be able to do that on screen and to do so in real time. So um, paying attention to to that that. That the simplicity of this encounter, those 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 few short hours they spent together, and so um, uh, I wanted to shoot it in real time and knew that that would be technically challenging. I'm not formally trained in, in cinema or filmmaking, um, and most of my experience as a filmmaker has been through documentary, um, and my narrative film experience has been through acting. Um, and so I deeply admired Kathleen's work. Um, she's been a friend for a number of years, and uh, her first feature, Never Steady, Never Still, uh, is so deeply moving. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an incredible film. Um, and so I, I, I often learned through collaboration and through working with others, and I knew that working with Kathleen uh, as uh, co-writing and co-directing would only serve to, to um, to uh, make the experience and uh, strengthen the narrative, uh, to make the experience richer and, and to strengthen the narrative. Do you know that guy? It's my boyfriend. Come on, honey. Let's move a little faster, okay? usually like that. He doesn't even mean it mostly. He can be good too. You're a long ways from home then. I told you I don't want any calls. I would just feel better if we could call someone, you know? Call someone who knows about this kind of stuff. It's a lot, hey? Being a mom. So you got anybody looking out for you, Rosie? I look out for myself. And the baby? You think you're better than me? You're not fucking better than me. I'm gonna protect us. No one's taking my baby. When did you two decide that you're going to co-direct and why was that? Mm -hmm. Well, right from the, the very beginning when Maya approached uh, myself with, with the project, she had intended to co-direct and I think um, Maybe you can speak to, to what, you, what you think, but I think we both feel that, that collaboration between women can, can really elevate uh, a project and a narrative, and um, it was never a question, you know, of, of whether or not I wanted to do it. It was very clear right from the beginning how exciting the project would be, and just the opportunity worth to work with Maya was, um, you know, something I, I really was thrilled and excited and honored to, to do. And how did you divide the job? Uh, I, I wouldn't say we divided the job. <laughs> I would say that we uh, we collaborated on every aspect of the of the process. Um, I I love the process of collaboration. It's never easy, um, but I find that uh, it's such an en enriching and engaging process to work with other creative minds, especially women. Um, and so. 
uh, our process was very organic. We were um, willing to experiment. We were willing to try things differently. Um, and so every step of the way was, I would say, experimental. <laughs> um, and uh, we were willing to listen to each other and willing to uh, recognize each other's strengths. And um, it all kind of came together quite organically, actually. Yeah. And I think what's so beautiful about working together in that way is you have uh, someone there to challenge every choice you're making and, and you have the opportunity to really think things out and make sure that the choices you make are, are for, made for the right reasons and, and really serve the story. We, we found Rosie through an open casting call. So uh, initially we went through the conventional um, casting channels, um, but we weren't quite finding um, the, the, the spirit of Rosie in, in the actors that we saw. And so we decided to open it up to an open casting call in hopes that we could find a young woman who embodied everything that Rosie was, which was like this beautiful, raw vulnerability, but also strength and humor and uh, someone who audiences would believe um, had, had lived in, in Rosie's skin. Um, and so we did this open casting call and saw so many self-tapes from such wonderfully talented, brave, young Indigenous women across Canada and were heartbroken because we couldn't cast them all. <laughs> um, but uh, that's how we came across Violet. Yeah. One of the things that I like most about this film, the two women, they, even though they're very separate, they're, you know, they're different, they're both survivors, it seems. But what, what I loved, aside from the way it was shot, maybe the, that, that had a lot to do with it, they're, we're having a conversation with them. I love that. How did you achieve that? Um, I think, you know, the tone of the film and the way that you feel like you're really with them, you know, did have a lot to do with the way that we shot it and our, our amazing cinematographer, Norm Lee. Um, but we really took the time to, uh, throughout the process of rehearsal, we had to really decide who we would be with when and, and what it meant to linger on one person rather than another. Um, so I think making those choices and the long takes and the silences in between really puts the audience in, in the room with them and you know that you, you can't leave, you're not going to get a break and you're not going to be able to look away. Um, so I think that, that was a big part of it. Mm -hmm. and what was the, the hardest part, of uh, the hardest, I guess, challenge of the, making this film? I mean, for me, one of the biggest challenges, it was a very um, emotional experience. We were dealing with subject matter that was serious, um, and we had to be very careful with what the way that we made the film to make sure everybody was feeling um, like they were in good hands and, and f could, could come forward if they were having difficulty. Um, so just, just knowing, being aware of, of of the energy and, and making sure that we were doing things in the best way that we could, I think. I mean, it wasn't a bad challenge. It was a good challenge, but it was, it wasn't easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, where, is, where is Hollywood when it comes to dealing with indigenous people, let alone women? Well, we're at a very interesting time in terms of Indigenous cinema and Indigenous representation. Um, indigenous filmmakers have been fighting for a very long time for um, access to, to, um, to funding, to be able to tell the kind of stories we want to tell. Um, we've been fighting for authentic representation and, and being, being um, in control of, of our own narratives um, because Hollywood has this long history of misrepresentation. Um, and it's an ongoing issue, but uh, there are so many talented Indigenous filmmakers who are um, making waves within within the industry. I think the most obvious is, is Taika Waititi, who's Maori from New Zealand. Um, he's 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 definitely um, changing the landscape, especially in Hollywood. Um, there's also Sterling Harjo, and then on the Canadian side, there are some phenomenally talented Indigenous filmmakers who are connecting with a much broader audience and um, are being able, uh, are being given the resources to be able to make the kind of films that they want to make. So there's like Jeff Barnaby and Dennis Goulet and uh, there's way too many to name, but um, it's, it's a very exciting time to be an Indigenous filmmaker. Well, what would you like the audiences to take away from this film? What would we like audiences to take away from well, this film? I think we were just speaking about this earlier. I think what we'd, we'd 
Our primary audience for this film is Indigenous women in particular, um, and one of the things that was really important to us in the process was to uh, create a film that Indigenous women felt reflected their own experience. So I think just that alone, to, to, to be in an audience and to see yourself represented in a way that you haven't seen before, um, can be, you know, really um, life-changing. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it, I mean, it, ultimately it was for yeah, Indigenous women, Indigenous youth. It was uh, for Indigenous women to, to see uh, and understand that they were being heard and that their voices matter and that they deserve space on screen. Um, but in terms of a broader audience, we wanted to present um, this complicated narrative wherein it's not black and white, it's not as simple as leaving. When a woman is experiencing domestic violence, it's not as simple as just being able to leave. It's much more complicated and um, the services offered are so uh, overwhelmed with need and so we want to be able to show um, the reality of, of that, that there are not enough services and the services that exist are not getting enough funding and support um, and also that uh, women across the world are experiencing violence at alarming rates um, and that it's a it's a very common thing that's happening in in every neighborhood and do, does it help to be in, in the festival circuit like something like AFI how does that help your film um, I think being in in the festival circuit at, at festivals such as AFI which has a very um, high profile uh, in the community, I think it's really important because it, it, it just gives exposure to people who wouldn't normally go out and see this film, maybe if it was just in the theater. Um, it adds sort of a... Elevates. Yeah, yeah, elevates the... You know, gives people a reason to go out and see the film, and that's the most exciting part for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me as an Indigenous woman, it's uh, it's so incredible to know that this um, this small film about two Indigenous women in Vancouver, Canada, is connecting with audiences all over the world um, on a very personal and intimate level. Um, and it means so much to know that um, audiences can, can go to the local cinema and, and, and watch this film, and soon they'll be able to watch it on Netflix, which is just... Uh, kind of surreal. <laughs> that was my next question. To have uh, the involvement of some uh, of Array and then Netflix, how did that happen? What does that bring to your film? <laughs> <laughs> uh, working with Array is, uh, again, surreal. It's like a dream. Um, we uh, we received some support through Sundance. Um, I received the Merita Mita um, Fellowship, and uh, that exposed us to... Um, to uh, some wonderful support on, on the American side, and that brought us to Array. Um, and we received a lot of rejections on the, along the way in terms of finding an American distributor and also trying to close our funding gap. Um, uh, but through Sundance, we were connected to, to um, Array and also to some financers who helped us close that gap. But uh, working with Array has been so phenomenal. Uh, it, it means the world to us to know that they're championing our film um, and it feels like the perfect fit because Array um, is community driven, it's very grassroots oriented, um, and it's about um, uplifting the voices of, of, of marginalized storytellers.